By now you've probably heard of the murders in Portland, the stabbings, uh, committed by free speech activist and white supremacist Jeremy Joseph Christian. I'm not fucking around when I say free speech activist. There's photos of him going to free speech rallies and, uh, you know, uh, responding to uh, the Berkeley, the Berkeley riots. And, uh, you know, he was on the freedom side. He was on the freedom side that I've mentioned on this channel before. Lauren Southern would uh, would love this guy because uh, he was he's fighting for her values about uh, defending the right to hate. So Jeremy Joseph Christian gets on public transit. He's agitated because it's the beginning of Ramadan and he feels that uh, Islamism is too uh, mainstream, that we even acknowledge Ramadan in our culture, uh, sets him off. He sees two young girls with their mother and decides he's going to exercise his right to hate speech and he's going to let them know what for. So he starts screeching and howling at them about, uh, you know, the dangers of Islam and the threat they pose. And Two men, three actually, three people, decided to intercede and, and abridge this man's freedom of speech. And he decided to stab them, two of them, to death. One of them is still recovering. Um... I have a horrible feeling that a lot of the, the free speech absolutists on this website would have defended that motherfucker right up until he stabbed somebody. That they would have popped up on the subway and said, Let him speak! While he's barking down these little girls. Talking about mud slimes. That's 4chan's favorite word for Muslims. I'm assuming if Sargon was sitting on the subway, he would uh, he'd pop up and go, you, you take it now, you listen. You, you, you fight back with your own speech. You're a little girl, but, uh, you know, look. You're on equal terms. If we compromise his rights, then uh, we can't allow for other forms of speech. As a society, we, uh, we would have to stop union protests if we stopped this grown man from barking epitaphs at you. We would have to, uh, you know, uh, edit and censor media. Can't read the books you want can't watch the movies you want because this guy, you know, it's all part of one big package. Uh, this white nut job screaming at little girls on the subway, uh, this guy is the linchpin of a free society. We gotta defend him. I guess until he started stabbing. Then, then, then they would be like, well, you know, uh, I'm all for free speech, but, uh, you know, he went a little too far. 4chan's already celebrating this guy. Paul, the right-wing political thread on 4chan, they're celebrating this guy as their guy. Based Knife Man. He's the next step in the evolution of their own uh, violent advocates for free speech. Like Kyle Chapman, Based Stick Man. Jeremy Joseph Christian is being celebrated as a hero of free speech. I... This evokes to me two things. Number one, 
the conversations, you know, if we're going to talk more immediately, the conversations that were had towards the end of the Obama administration about the limitations of the Second Amendment, these, these kind of free speech absolutist arguments, evoke to me this um, moment in our culture where the Wayne LaPierres of the world were confronted with the Sandy Hook Massacre and the Colorado Movie Theater Massacre. And we were all expecting this breaking point. We were expecting even the most absolute Second Amendment uh, activist to, to, to grow a heart and uh, suddenly realize the error of their ways uh, that we need some kind of reasonable restraint on the Second Amendment. People shouldn't be allowed to walk around with automatic weapons ex executing babies and um, fans of Batman who happen to go to the Midnight Show. But we were wrong. We were wrong because once someone has made their ideology, once you've taken a principle and made it absolute, you have now put that principle above human life. Only one thing in this world is absolute. Death. Nothing else. Nothing else is an absolute principle. Nothing else is inevitably going to happen. Death. I have very deep beliefs about freedom. I have very deep beliefs about uh, social justice and anarchism and communism. But I would not say that I have any beliefs that are absolute. Not a single one. There are always mitigating circumstances. And there always has to be a limitation. There has to be a ceiling. Even on pacifism. Even on, even on the commitment to nonviolence, one has to say, at some point, that has to go out the window. You can only be a pacifist up to a certain point, and vice versa. You can only have a commitment to violence up to a certain point. There has to be, a, there has to be an upward limit, right? Even people who are advocates of the Second Amendment were had their foundation shaken when they saw those dead babies, those dead 26 toddlers in the school at Sandy Hook. A lot of them were, were armed insurrectionists. And it made them think. Not the people who profit. The people who profit on, on, on being absolutists. Those people are never going to change their mind. They can't. Because it will cost them money. You know, Studs Terkel, the journalist, was right. You can't really persuade someone away from something they're getting paid to believe. So don't, you know, don't don't judge the movement on the people who are being paid to be absolutists. Consider the people on the ground. The other thing it reminds me of is is, is hate crime legislation. Uh, when I was a young man teenager and into the end of uh, high school and the beginning of college years, uh, we were having a conversation about, please excuse my, f my faded voice, we were having a conversation about hate crime laws, and it was the same fucking conversation back then about, aren't all murders hatred, aren't all murders premised on hate? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be a proper deterrent? We have a hard time measuring the statistics on how, on the extent to which hate crime legislation has been effective for the same reason that we can't properly diagnose the extent to which autism, the disorder, not the meme, has become more prominent in the population. Is it because more kids are being born with autism? Or is it because more doctors are diagnosing cases of autism they wouldn't have recognized uh, 30 or 40 years ago? 
we have the same problem with hate crime legislation and its efficacy as a deterrent. Because it would seem, it would seem that in the wake of hate crime legislation that a lot of the numbers indicate that there are more hate crimes all these years later. But it also seems like there, there, there's a possibility that the reason that it seems like there used to be less hate crimes is that no one was being charged with hate crimes before the, these legislations were implemented, at least in the United States, to, to make uh, hatred a mitigating legal circumstance. There is preference, excuse me, there is precedence in the United States of America that a law, uh, 45 states currently have hate crime legislation. So we've al it's already illegal to hate in the United States of America. It's just not legal to say hateful things. It's just not illegal to say hateful things yet. We've already recognized the threat. We've already recognized that in an incident like the Dylan Roof case, where he killed uh, five people in a Charleston church, uh, the hate crime uh, charge is important because it's a form of social acknowledgement. It's a, it's an acknowledge of it's an acknowledgement of the murder the crime not just being murder but the crime being the, <clears throat> the symbolism of the killing the way that it harms a society at large the way that it'll perpetuate more targeted violence. I, I can't believe that we have a fucking a murder by a Nazi and the first thing that the media says is the motherfucker is a free speech activist where are we as a goddamn society the guy's a motherfucking free speech activist you can say everything you want about Timothy McVeigh the motherfucker wasn't at the vanguard of the current free speech movement this cocksucker was at the vanguard he is, he is the, the freedom side encapsulated. He's a man wrapped in an American flag. That's how out of control our sort of irrational commitment to a maximalist principle is here. We have to agree, as a society, to come to some kind of a legitimate limitation on the First Amendment, as we already... There's already... There's already... There is no fucking country in the world. And America has the most generous free speech uh, provisions in the first world that I'm aware of. There's no country in the world that has absolute free speech. And this screeching... And this uh, puffing up of hate speech at these free speech protests has got to be challenged. There has to be some kind of reaction to this. Th this is the Sandy Hook moment for the free speech, the modern free speech movement. Are you going to follow the road to hell that you've paved with good intentions? The dead bodies matter. The dead bodies of the two men who stepped in. One was a conservative Republican. My understanding is the other one was a hippie SJW activist. And they both saw these immediate consequences of, of free speech, of hate speech, in real life. It wasn't abstract like at a protest. It wasn't harmless. It wasn't a guy standing on the street corner screaming nigger at the top of his lungs into the into the void it was real and again please excuse me for my faded voice but now that there now that there are bodies and potentially you know what's crazy here is that this could have been way worse because if those two guys had not interceded the two, the, 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 the two men who lost their lives, those two little Muslim girls 
could have been at the end of that knife. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that the people who died, I'm not putting lives above other lives. But I'm just saying that what would have been the reaction if this motherfucker stabbed the two little girls to death? Are you going to stand in a pool of blood? Are, are you going to uh, virtue signal about free speech as you stand in the pool of, <laughs> of blood, of children's blood? Where's the ceiling? Because I can certainly tell where the fucking floor is.